Hey Kenneth, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I'm going to show you how I cut prescription invisible bifocals for your new Polo 2070 color 5427 in the 54i size matte black finish with the platinum trim on there. Spring hinges, nice nice frame. Frame sells for 150 the invisible bifocals are at 129 And what do I do with your lenses? Here we are, they're down here. Down here, let's go ahead and get to work. So I'm going to pop out your original demo lenses. The little ones that say Ralph Lauren Polo on there. And I'm going to put your Italian frame into my Italian Santanelli LE1000 patternless edger. Where the stylus is going to come up and trace the shape of the right lens. And then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the left lens. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy the frame and you either get free single vision prescription or non-prescription lenses. Of course, not only is this an invisible bifocal, this is your first bifocal. First progressive, first no line bifocal, first multifocal, goes by a million names. But I'm gonna pull up the shape of your lens. I'm gonna put in your pupillary distance of 35 in both eyes. Let me enter that in there till I have 35 on both sides. Oops, overshot it. Now it's 35. I'm going to do a bifocal height of 15. So I'm going to pull this up to the center of the lens. We are good there. And this is a polycarbonate lens being cut on the soft cycle for a Xyl frame, which is an old school name for plastic. So let's begin. And I have covered up your phone number and email so all your adoring fans can't reach you. And you can live your private, isolated life away from all your fans. So these are your lenses before I begin cutting. And what I need to do is put some dots on there. This is called a progressive identifier. Every progressive lens has little laser markings in there. It tells me the brand and it tells me the power of the bifocal. I just need to find those little etchings because that'll help me line up as what you are about to see. Now I'm gonna put this underneath here and I'm just gonna find the little tiny laser marks. Put one there on that side. And then I underline that and put an L on there. That is your bifocal power. I know you can't see this in this magnification, but I'm going to put a dot there, a dot there, and then an R for right. Now, once I have those two dots, it enables me to go over here. It's called a layout chart. I put those dots down over those two dots, and that tells me the optical center of your lens. That's the fitting cross. That is where your lens is going to sit right in front of your pupil and I measure in half millimeter so I want to make sure I get this perfect which I will so this this block needs to go on to your lens essentially it's uh, it's going to hold it in place while it's cutting so I need to put a little double-sided adhesive sticker on here and believe it or not they're made by 3M the same people who make the post-it notes but the black side is the sticky side I'm going to stick that onto the block I'm going to pull away the tape to make the other side sticky. I'm going to get everything lined up perfectly now. If you can imagine the crosshairs of a scope, you have a vertical meridian and a horizontal. I'm using those lines to get everything lined up just perfectly. Aiming for the dead center of the bullseye. And we are good there. Let's do the same thing for the left lens. Put that in there. Pull the sticker off. Line everything up, make sure the optical centers are lined up perfectly. And they are, so that is put on there. I'm going to take your right lens, put it into the Chuck, or as I like to say, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough, other than standing in front of it for 10 or uh, 12 hours a day. But these calipers are going to come down and trace the shape of your right lens to make sure it's large enough to fit. And it is. I measured all this before ordering the lenses. But this is just a routine operation. It's tracing the concave side of the lens first. Then it's going to move over and trace the, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the concave side, which is closest to your eyelashes. Now it's tracing the convex side, which is away from the face. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom. It's that lighter color wheel. It's like a heavy grit sandpaper. That's going to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center with that channel is, is what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door due to the sound, but I just want you to see as your invisible bifocal touches down onto the cutting wheel. Now 
Now your prescription lens, I'm gonna step away so I can talk. Your prescription reads, your right eye is minus 50, minus 50 at 87. Your left eye minus 50, minus a quarter at 98. And you have an additional two in your bifocal. So what the unit of measurement in the optical field, you've heard of gounces, gallons, ounces, pounds. From the optical field, we use the term diopter, and that is spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. And everything is in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.751, one, and so on. So your right eye, you actually need two steps of correction. And these actually don't magnify, these minify. Without your glasses on, things are actually a little bit too large. So this will shrink things down to the correct size. It will minify two steps. You're on the second rung of a ladder. Now you have two steps of astigmatism correction. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. Someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. People freak out when they hear that. This first number gets everything the correct size. This corrects the astigmatism. And astigmatism makes fuzzy edges. That's why sixes and eights look alike. The letters P and F. Now this number 87, this is an arbitrary number from 0 to 180. If the top of this card were a straight line, 0 and 180. If this were a circle, 0, 90, 180, 270, back to 0. This is the fine-tune knob, your astigmatism. So if we were turning that, the old TVs had that crispness knob. That's what we're doing. We're turning every that knob to make everything nice and crisp. And we're turning it to 87, which is just before the 90. Your left eye, it's a 98, so we're going to go just a little bit beyond that. Now, the same in the left eye. You need two steps of correction to get everything to correct size. You only need one step of astigmatism correction at 98. Now, you need plus two, an additional two diopters to see up close. That is your bifocal portion of it. Now, you do not need a plus two reading glasses. This is where you make your high school algebra teacher happy or sad, because back then I said, I'll never use algebra on the job. Well, you actually have to add these two values together. You have a minus 50 and a plus 2. So if you had $2 and someone borrowed 50 cents, you would have 150 left. And those are the actual reading glasses you would need. Now, if you have long arms, which you do, you may need one and a quarter. The higher the number, the closer you have to bring it to you. If you had a 2 or a 250 or a 3, it would force you to bring it closer and closer. A jeweler's loop is a plus 10. But they're holding that stone. You can't see it, I guess. But they're holding the stone just beyond their eyelashes to examine it. They're not looking at it out here with a plus 10 magnifier. So your lens is done. I do want to dry it off so it's not slippery. And it's, it's almost done, I should say. You still have a little bit of rough edges going around there. So what I'm going to do is use my hand stone to smooth that out. And my hand stone is completely flat. I can put my hand on it while it's running. And when my fingers get warm due to the friction, it is that friction that allows me to go around the outside of your lens and smooth out those rough edges. Now this white powdery substance that is there is called Schwarf. I'm going to use my thumbnail to scrape all of that off the edge of your lens. And once it falls onto the counter, I collect it all nicely and neatly. And once I have it in one pile, then I would just wipe it onto the floor. And this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. If you want to grow up and make a mess, stay in school like me. So I'm going to see if this fits. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner first into that slot. Then I use my thumbs to push down at the nose. And it actually needs to go a little bit more. I program my machine, machine to cut a little bit large. I'm going to take a tenth of a millimeter off the circumference of your lens. And a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going around the circumference so your lens will pop in easily. You can always cut more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. So I start a little bit large and then work my way down. The right lens always takes me a little bit longer. Once this is perfect, I'm going to flip it in and cut the left. Now I could force your lens in there or I could use heat to do that to get your frame a little bit more pliable. You see optical companies do that. They also do it for the temples and that's the only reason I do this is to make that pliable to adjust it behind the ears. Normally I like to do what's known as a cold mount or cold insert where it pops in easily. The reason I do that, if I ever put a lens in that was too large, it would stretch your frame or cause it to roll or warp. Rolling, if you can imagine this being a gutter, just like your rain gutter, if the lens was in there too large, it would this would eventually turn outward and it would roll your frame. 
and make your lens hard to stay in. Plus, cosmetically, that doesn't look good. And since I do my own lab work, and only you know 95% of all optical shops do not cut their own lenses anymore. They're just middlemen. They take the measurements, ask what you want, and then they sub it out and have someone else do the work. That's why they tell you to come back in 10 to 14 days because they're paying a middleman to do the work and then they send it to your shop. You go to pick it up. If there's any problems, they tell you come back in 10 to 14 days or I can fix it right now. Plus, they have no idea why the lenses don't work since if you don't work on them every day, you just don't know. And it's not a, that's not a knock to people in the industry. It's just, you know, they work with what they work with and they just don't work with cutting their own lenses. So back to the handstone real quick. Back to the safety bevel. Back to using my thumbnail to scrape all the shore off all your lenses and do something different. How about a little behind the back technique there onto the floor? Kids, kids, stay in school. How many times I got to tell you? All right, so I'm going to see if this fits with the cold insert. I tuck it in at the outside corner first. Then using my thumbs, I press and it snaps in perfectly. That's what I want to have it go in easily. I'm going to now cut your left lens. I'm going to flip it over and hit the start button. I flipped it to left, that is. Just like before, the calipers are going to come down and trace the shape of your left lens this time. Again, starting on the concave side of the lens first, closest to your eyelashes, and then it's going to trace the convex side of the lens, which sits away from the face. Now, your polycarbonate lenses that I've cut for you, am cutting for you, polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. These are the feather light lenses you hear about. They are also virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, excuse me, your skin. So you now have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Here we go as your left lens starts to cut, touch down on the cutting wheel. While that is cutting, I want to continue to work on your right lens. I'm going to take this block off that is no longer needed. Pop that off. And my red dot disappeared from the center, so I'm going to lay it back down again. For those little two circles, I'm going to put my red dots over those two circles. And that tells me the fitting cross, that little cross you see there, I'm going to put a dot in the center. I'm going to measure that as 35 millimeters to the center of the bridge, which it is. I'm also going to measure that as 15 millimeters to the bottom of the frame, which that is. I'm going to spin the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 87, which is the axis of your right eye. I'm going to put your lens in just over that red dot that you see. I'm going to read the powers and I am getting minus 50. We have zero and one and I'm exactly halfway between that. I'm going to check for your astigmatism correction and we have minus 50 and minus 50. When you add those two together, you get minus one and that is the value that I'm reading now. Hopefully you can see that. Take that out. I'm going to go ahead and spin the axis wheel to 98, which is the axis of your left eye and I'll inspect that as soon as it comes out. This is a great frame. This matte black, it's got the platinum rider on the side, the polo rider and the platinum thing here. The trim piece, so when you look down or you will look left or right, people will see that. And you don't have the same issue I have, but I got a little bit of gray on the side. Of course, you got a little facial hair there, but that platinum piece is really gonna pick up on the, the gray of your facial hair. And it's gonna look really, really good, make you look distinguished. But I don't have to tell you that. Your wife of seven years, you just had your anniversary weekend down at Myrtle Beach, good for you. And of course, I proposed to my wife while we were at Myrtle Beach. So good things come from Myrtle Beach. Plus, you know, they got the Krispy Kreme hot sign down there. We always ride by and wait for that hot sign to come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Turn that sign on. Needs me some donuts. So your lens is actually getting the little safety bevel. Well, not the safety bevel, but just the bevel itself. The water that's running is just washing away any optical debris. Of course, as soon as I take it out, I'm going to put even more on there. We are done, so I'm going to take it out of the chuck. Of course, as I like to say, the Charles. And let me dry your lens off again. 
back to the handstone to smooth off the last of those rough edges. Come on, friction. Grind me away some lenses. So that is there. Use my thumbnail to scrape that away. And this time, straight onto the floor. Look at that technique. Kids, stay in school. All right, so I'm going to see if this fits now. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner closest to me. Then using my thumbs, I press down to the nose. It snaps in perfectly. I'm going to take this block off since it is no longer needed. Pull that sticker off. It is no longer needed. I got a little bit of a red dot left on that one. But I'm going to go ahead and darken that a little bit more. So now when I measure your pupillary distance is 35 in both eyes for a total of 70. Oops, oops. Getting, getting silly, getting silly. Hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can get a better background, higher contrasting background. So now you can see the two dots. I need to get 70. I'm going to put zero on your right lens next to my thumb. And then when I hold it up to your left lens, you see 70. So that is cut perfectly. I want to measure the bifocal height on this one. It is 15. I'm going to put the zero right there on the lens. And you measure to the middle of the frame. So I'm getting 15 millimeters there. So the height of that bifocal is perfect. We are on 98. I'm going to put your lens in there. Again, I'm getting minus 50, which is halfway between 0 and 1. Minus 50 is the power. Now you have one step of correction, minus a quarter. So when I add those two together, this will be minus 75, which is what we have. One tick mark just shy of minus 1. So we are good to go there. I'm going to get your frame in standard alignment, even though I'm going to adjust it for you. I price it on the counter and make sure there is no wobble where I have one ear that's higher than the other. In fact, 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. That's why all glasses need to be adjusted. But when I press down on mine, there is a wobble. But for now, there is no wobble for you. I'll adjust it if I need to. I flip it over, press down. There is no wobble there. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. And you have the two platinum riders on both sides. Same amount of tension on both sides. I do want to go ahead and clean the red dots off now. They have served their purpose. Unless you want to be the first on your block to wear them with those dots. But I'm going to use my optical grade acetone to clean all the markings off of your lenses. Clean the dot off the back side. Again, clean the rest of the marks off the front of your lens. That puts me there to show that everything is where it should be. I'm going to clean my fingerprints off your lenses so you cannot collect that big reward the FBI has out on me. And that is that. I just want to hold them up to the light to make sure there are no blemishes and that is perfect. So if anyone, oops, you know what? It's not. There's a little piece of paint left on there. A little piece of blue paint. Now let's try this again and make sure there are no blemishes on the lens. Yep, we are good to go. So that is it. Now, if anyone has any questions out there, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to answer them as soon as possible. Kenneth, I hope you enjoyed watching your glasses being made, and everyone else out there, I hope you got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.